Hey, it's Garrick. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do something a little different. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about Mac and how to save money if you're looking to upgrade your storage. Or if you're looking to purchase a Mac and need more storage than the basic minimum, I have an alternative for you. Let's take a look what we got. iPad Pro with the M1 chip here, uh, 11 inch, works perfectly fine for what I'm looking, for what I use it for, primarily small little edits, on the fly, and so forth. Here is my original workhorse. This is a MacBook Air, uh, bare minimum with the M1 chip with a 256 gigabyte storage. This was great uh, when I was making basic videos, right? Family videos, doing little things here and there, posting on Instagram, whatever the case may be. That's what I use this for. As I'm creating more content and doing more with YouTube, I found that the MacBook Air didn't cut out, right? Um, didn't have enough uh, memory, uh, the storage wasn't really there, so I upgraded to the Mac Mini with the M2 Pro chip, and this one here also with the bare minimum 512 gigabyte uh, storage. So, still not enough, right? When you're filming a lot of videos, doing a lot of takes and so forth, what I found was this wasn't helpful, so I stored everything into iCloud. So the iCloud gave me two terabytes of storage, which is great. The problem is, as I'm creating videos, I have to pull it out of the cloud, I have to do this, and I have to do that, and it just took a lot longer than I wanted to. Um, so, I found a solution. The solution is creating an external hard drive using an SSD, right? So, you know, just to go over a little bit, little, little information here, you know, the MacBook Air, Right. If you if you go with the bare minimum of 256 gigabytes, if you wanted to upgrade, and the max you can upgrade is two terabytes, it's eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars just to upgrade the internal storage from 256 to two terabytes. Now, granted, it's going to be fast. Right. Now, eight hundred dollars is a lot of money. So with the mini, if you want to upgrade to the two terabytes from the 512, it's going to run you roughly about $600. It's a lot of money there as well. Now, with the mini, you can upgrade all the way up to eight terabytes, and that's going to cost you $2,400. That is insane. With the upgrade that, I, that we're going to show you in a little bit, my setup here is going to make it a little easier for me. So I love to travel. I'm not going to bring my whole computer set up with me. So what I'm really going to do is I'm going to bring this with me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the memory cards out of my cameras, uh, take, pull things from the iCloud, and able to add it to this external hard drive. And when I get home, when I get down to my workstation, I'm going to be able to pull all the information I need from here at a fraction of a cost. On top of that, it's going to be a lot quicker. So what I want to do next is I want to take the enclosure. I'm going to take this NVMe SSD hard drive, which happens to be a Western Digital. Uh, this particular one is the SN770, two terabytes. And there's a great deal online right now. SSD cards are dropping in price. Gen 3s, Gen 4s are being discounted. This is a great opportunity to expand your memory with the prices coming down. So with all these things I have here, right, I'm going to obviously, this could be more mobile, this could be more, I'm going to be having my workstation at home. What I'm really going to do is I am going to make an external hard drive using a NVMe SSD enclosure up to 40 gigabytes. After putting this all together, uh, we're going to run some speed tests using Blackmagic. Uh, I'm going to use the speed test on both devices here. The MacBook Air is using Thunderbolt 3 and the Mac Mini is using Thunderbolt 4. So let's take a look to see if there's any speed differences between one versus the other. Uh, but overall, this setup here is gonna help you save money and also save time. Come on, let's go check it out. So before I put anything together, uh, so I wanna let you know is that this video is not sponsored by anybody. I purchased all these things here with my own money. I just wanted to share it with you so you get the opportunity to help save some money and or offer a solution for anybody out there that's looking to expand their storage, okay? So this enclosure is made by Encases. Let's take a look at this here, all right. 
Okay, it comes with his own screwdriver, it comes with his own USB-C cord. It comes with his own thermal pads, but we're gonna use uh, the thermal pads here. Um, these are actually work better than the one coming from cases. And here is the enclosure, which is very nice. Space gray. Nice setup here. Pretty simple. Slide the SSD card in there, put the thermal pads up on top. Probably put another thermal pad over here, allow to uh, tr transfer the heat uh, faster uh, to the casing uh, so it can actually keep the SSD card cooler. Now, just letting you all know that I'm going to have links down here in my description and also the uh, certain SSD cards that's going to work out great for your setup. So as you get your SSD card, you're going to slide it in an angle like you see here. You're going to push it down and you're going to take one of the bolts in here and you're going to bolt uh, the SSD card directly into the enclosure. Perfect. So that's set up there. So with the thermal pads that I have here, uh, I was actually, I have a nice thick one here that actually is going to work really well because as I put it on top of the SSD card, and when I place this uh, cover on, you can definitely feel there's a little give here, uh, so which works out perfect uh, instead of using two. So let's go, let's go apply that. see here is all set and done nice really small uh, hard drive here uh, nice actually looks really nice looks pretty cool so what I'm gonna do next is uh, we're gonna go take a speed test and see how quick this setup is all right let's go check it out all right so right now I have the hard drive hooked up directly to my MacBook Air what we're gonna do now is we're gonna format it we're gonna have it open on disk utility click on erase Change the name, whatever you want it to, whatever you think is going to be work best for you. And we want to make sure that the format is an APFS. Uh, that's going to give you the maximum speed for your, uh, for your hard drive. So after you do that, you click on Erase, wait about a minute, your hard drive will be formatted. All right, after all said and done, as you can see here, this is formatted for the Mac. Uh, what we're going to do next is that we're going to open up Blackmagic and run the test. So the first test is going to be on the MacBook Air. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Select Target Drive, and we're going to make sure that we're going to select the external hard drive, or whatever you named it to. All right, so we're going to start the test. And what I want to do next is I want to run it a few times. I want to get an average on the write and the read speed. Uh, that will give us a great sense on how quick this uh, hard drive setup is. All right, so as we see here, we're averaging roughly the write and the read speed about 2700, which is fairly quick for an external uh, hard drive. Uh, this particular setup uh, works out really, really well for uh, having something fast without paying top dollar with Apple. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna attach this hard drive directly to the Mac mini to see if we get similar or better results. All right, so I'm on the Mac Mini. I'm gonna open up Blackmagic. Obviously, we're gonna select the target drive. It will be external, and then we're gonna run the test. Just as we did on the MacBook Air, we're gonna run it for a few times, get a, an average sense of speed on the write and read. As you can see here, the write speed, it's about the same as on the MacBook Air, but the read speed is actually a little quicker, probably due to the M2 Pro chip. So as you can see the results, this thing is pretty fast, right? Uh, on the MacBook Air and also on the Mac Mini. 
So on the MacBook Air, it showed that the write speed was roughly about 2700, 2705 uh, megabytes per second, where the read speed's roughly about the same. On the Mac Mini, uh, the write speed's just about the same, a touch faster. Uh, the read speed was actually a little quicker, uh, just shy of 2800 megabytes per second. Uh, but overall, if you really think about it, for a fraction of the cost, you can create a perfect external hard drive that you can use with multiple Mac devices without having to spend crazy amount of money with Apple. If you're looking to make a similar setup, please definitely use the links below. I do get a little credit for that. Uh, that also helps support the channel. If there's anything that you want me to cover or you want me to go over, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. Definitely gonna have a lot more videos about how to save money on electronics and technology, go over reviews of different products, and of course, more about Tesla. I'll catch you guys on the road.